Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jose, and uh, welcome to Central Park. Uh, my name uh, for today, we are actually going to be uh, walking through what's called uh, the Harlem Mirror. Um, and on behalf of everyone here, I'd like to welcome you all on our virtual uh, tour, or rather our weekly walk. So just a bit of a housekeeping uh, before we get started. Uh, all participants are muted, but you can, of course, use the chat feature to say hello and comment. Uh, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A function. And my colleague, Ryan, is going to be on the back end. He's going to be uh, answering any questions as we go along. Now, the images that you folks are going to be uh, seeing for today, uh, these were taken by myself within the past week. But you'll also see some historic images, and these were taken from the photo archives of the New York Public Library. Uh, closed captioning has also been enabled for accessibility for folks who are hard of hearing. If you're on a laptop or a PC and you don't want to see the captions, simply press live transcript and then press hide subtitle. Uh, if you're on a cell phone, tablet, iPad, or other mobile device, you'll need to change your settings on Zoom. Um, let's go ahead and actually uh, get started off uh, with uh, the mission statement. So our official mission here at the Central Park Conservancy is to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life, enhancing the enjoyment and well-being uh, of all. And basically, we've been hard at work uh, maintaining and managing Central Park since 1980. All right, so before we begin, just a bit of house, uh, just uh, let's actually go ahead and go over our route for today. We're going to go ahead and start off over at the northeastern corner of the park, uh, basically right by Duke Ellington Circle. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, walk in a counterclockwise direction uh, along the shoreline of the roughly 10-acre Harlem Mere. Uh, along the way, we're going to be exploring some of the hidden secret uh, body of water, uh, we're also going to be looking at uh, its natural beauty, and we're going to talk about its historical significance as well. Uh, by the way, in case you were wondering, the word mirror uh, in Harlem mirror, basically it's a Dutch word meaning lake. So you're going to hear me uh, reference it uh, as such throughout our walk for today. All right, so we are right now here at Pioneer's Gate, right across from Duke Ellington Circle. So this, of course, serves as the main northeastern entrance uh, into uh, Central Park. And of course, you're going to see uh, loads and loads of visitors here from the uh, nearby neighborhoods. As you might imagine, Central Park serves as a uh, main gathering spot for locals in the community. And that's uh, especially very much true up here in the Harlem. Um, as soon as we, of course, enter the gate, we're met with plenty of open space and quite a bit of relaxing views. Uh, right now, let's go ahead and follow the path on the right, and that's going to lead us uh, west along the northern shore of the mirror. But first, don't forget to fill up those water bottles. Now, many drinking fountains in the park also have uh, basins for dogs to use, like the one on the right. Uh, this summer, of course, has been very, very, very hot, uh, often reaching close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit here in New York City, and that was especially true uh, last week. Uh, when I took the uh, photos uh, for this weekly walk. So, of course, if you're out walking your dogs here in Central Park or, or surely anywhere uh, else for that matter, please, please, please ensure that you're giving them uh, plenty of water to drink. And, of course, looking south from the pathway, we get our uh, first open view of the water. Now, there are, of course, going to be uh, many other waterside views just like this one. And I think the Harlem Mirror is lovely from pretty much all angles. And moving on, we're going to make our way down the pathway, and we can start to see some of the uh, nice stately trees of the upper park. So let's actually go ahead and examine a few of them right now. Uh, if you've ever walked along the mirror before, you might have seen uh, these trees, especially along its northern shore. These are basically what's called uh, bald cypresses, and there are, of course, lots of them up here in this part of the park. They're basically in the same family of trees as junipers and redwoods, and just like their uh, cousins, uh, the redwoods and the sequoias, uh, they can get pretty, pretty tall. They are, of course, native to the uh, marshes and swamps of the southeast uh, of the United States. Here in Central Park, they really love to be right by the water. Uh, they're known for having these things called knees, uh, which basically grow from the roots and help stabilize 
uh, these tall trees on wet, muddy swamp. However, scientists are actually still debating on what they actually do. Uh, either way, I think they give uh, bald cypress trees such an interesting character. And just a few steps uh, away to the north, you can find this Japanese pagoda tree providing some excellent shade in the uh, Dana lawn, especially for picnickers during the warm summer months. Uh, despite its name, it's actually native to uh, China and Korea, and it sometimes actually goes by the name Chinese scholar tree. It really does thrive on uh, in urban conditions, and it can actually withstand the everyday pollution found in cities. Now, this particular tree actually blooms in late summer uh, to about early fall or so. And in fact, you can actually uh, start to see some of its uh, white flowers already uh, appearing. Now, right across the pathway from the uh, Japanese pagoda tree, you're going to uh, find this large building. This is the Charles A. Dana Discovery Center. And it's one of the park's main visitor centers, along with the Belvedere Castle and the Columbus Circle Kiosk. Uh, here in this building, you can grab maps, uh, information, uh, restrooms. You can talk to some of our conservancy employees and volunteers. You can also, of course, view a small exhibit on Central Park's history. Now, even though the building really looks like it was probably built maybe, I don't know, back in like the 19th century or whenever, it was actually only constructed in 1993 when it replaced an older boathouse that was here uh, in the mirror. And closer to the water, you're going to find this open terrace um, with uh, lots of benches that's really quite popular with uh, the locals around here. It's located just outside of the Dana Center, and its many trees provide uh, lots of nice shade for uh, relaxing or just, you know, watching uh, the uh, water or just, you know, people watching or whatever else. Now, officially, this is going to be called the uh, Leela Wallace Reader's Digest Terrace, and it opened up in 1993, uh, right around the same time that the Dana Center was also unveiled to the public. Now, if you actually look down to the ground, you can see uh, this official name is actually etched onto the pavement itself. You might also be able to see that the uh, pavement also functions as a compass, which of course points uh, the way north. Now, with such a lovely view of the Harlem Mirror and the buildings of Fifth Avenue, it's really no wonder that uh, this terrace is so popular. So right now, we're actually looking southeast. Definitely a bit quiet out on the terrace right now, but at any given moment in time, you can uh, encounter all sorts of activity here, such as, of course, the Harlem Mirror uh, Performance Festival, which is a free concert series held during the summertime, uh, attracting jazz, Latin, blues and rock bands. Now this particular image I'm showing you folks right now, this is from the most recent one, which was actually just held a few weeks ago. Okay, so right now let's actually go ahead and conduct our uh, poll of the uh, day right now. And let me go ahead and launch that poll. And here we go. Okay, so music is of course uh, such an important part of New York City's culture. And right now, I want to ask folks, have you ever attended a concert here in Central Park before? Now, you can actually uh, go ahead and vote now uh, in your screen. Um, all right. So it looks like most of us are voting. And I'm uh, still kind of voting right now. So let me just go ahead and give you folks about a couple more seconds. All right. Let's go ahead and end off the poll right now. And I'm going to go ahead. Uh, and share uh, the results right now. All right, so it looks like about 44% of you uh, have attended a concert here in Central Park at least maybe once or twice before. 21% uh, uh, have attended a concert maybe a few times a year. And a little bit more than a third uh, of you all have never actually been uh, to a concert here in Central Park. Um, there are, of course, lots of music performances uh, here in the park every year from impromptu uh, music jams and relatively small shows with a few dozen people to major events like this Saturday's homecoming concert at the Great Lawn, which actually is slated to feature uh, really big, big top acts like Bruce Springsteen, uh, Patti Smith, LL Cool J, uh, Carlos Santana, Wyclef John, the New York Philharmonic, and so many more. Upwards of something like around 60,000 people are expected to attend 
Um, and of course, it's really definitely great to see uh, many of you have also experienced uh, other concerts here in the park as well. It's really just uh, quite magical enjoying uh, music here in the park. All right, so let's go ahead and keep moving on now. And right now we're uh, making our way west. So from here, we're going to make a right turn and we're going to make a bit of a detour uh, away from the water for a bit. And we come now to 110th Street uh, over at Lenox Avenue, also known as Malcolm X Boulevard. Now, this is one of the main entrances uh, into the park from Central Harlem. Now, today, much like the rest of Manhattan, it's also a very uh, highly urbanized neighborhood with uh, plenty of activity. For many generations, however, this area uh, where we're standing was actually really quite a quiet rural village on the outskirts of town. Now, this illustration that I'm showing you right now actually depicts uh, Central Park North uh, and the general area from when it was still mostly farmland and country uh, estates back in the 1860s. It really wasn't until well after the construction of the park that Harlem really started to turn into a bustling urban community. And these farmland, uh, farm lots were then transformed into uh, city blocks packed full of apartments. In fact, the gate just outside called Farmer's Gate, as you can see here on the etching, is I like to think as kind of like a bit of a nod to uh, these uh, early rural days of New York City. Okay, so right now, um, we're gonna head back into the park and from here past these two London plane trees over on the left and the right, we're gonna head over to the Western shore of the Mere. All right, so right now we are about halfway through our walk and our next uh, few stops will be along the Southern shore where the ground starts to get a little bit uh, more rocky and a little bit more hilly. But first, let's go ahead and admire this view real quick. I often get the chance to walk through this area of the park quite frequently, and this is one of the views that always uh, kind of stands out. Not only do you get the natural beauty of the uh, water and the trees from the spot, but you also get to see the fine architecture of the park. And of course, there's also reminders of the uh, city uh, over in the background. Now, right by this pathway, uh, there's this rock that's been kind of like shaped into a bench. This is probably one of my favorite spots to sit in the park. Uh, there's a really nice view of the mirror here, and you can, of course, just kind of relax all day here, uh, maybe with a nice book and a cup of coffee. Uh, right around the corner, you can uh, see the small artificial island in the middle of the water. So it's got trees like pitch pines, mulberries, uh, black cherries, and of course, plenty of shrubs as well. Uh, visitors aren't actually allowed access into this island, and that's because it was created as a way of providing birds like ducks and other wildlife a quiet, undisturbed uh, spot to rest, as well as to make the mirror look a little bit more naturalistic. Now, this particular island is sometimes called Duck Island, and it was originally created by a uh, former park commissioner, Henry J. Stern, uh, during renovations about 30 years ago. Uh, in fact, according to uh, Mr. Stern himself, he was actually inspired by the landscapes of Lake George and Lake Placid, uh, Lake Placid uh, in upstate New York. All right, so moving on now, let's go ahead and keep following the pathway uh, around the mirror. And here you can actually see uh, this fork in the road. We're gonna go ahead and take the one over on the left and that'll take us uh, under this weeping willow. Now, there are of course, uh, quite a few willow trees around this area, but I always find this one to be one of the most beautiful. As you can see, it's long flowing branches pretty much cascade down into the water. The tree itself is fairly large and can provide uh, quite a bit of shade. Uh, perfect for, of course, hot summer days. And of course, you'll often see folks just kind of sitting here, relaxing on benches, or just kind of enjoying the water. And a little further down, uh, we can see this rock outcrop uh, of Manhattan Schist. Now, the northern or the, uh, the southern shore of the Harlem Mirror is uh, really quite uh, marked by quite a lot of these hills. Uh, north of this area, all the way up to the Harlem River, the ground basically is flat. The park designers basically used this uh, to, the, uh, to their advantage, and they carved out the mirror in the 1860s as a rustic water body adjacent to these dramatic rocks. And of course, if we were to uh, stand on some of these hills today, we'd have some pretty fine views of the area. And here we have 
uh, some of the uh, drill holes that we use to uh, carve out these uh, gigantic rocks uh, and make them more suitable to the new uh, goers uh, in the 60s. And as we head east, uh, we're met with this picture perfect view of the Dana Center and uh, East Harlem uh, in the background. You also get to pass by this very large black willow tree along the pathway. Now, while it doesn't have uh, very dramatic cascading branches uh, like its cousin, the weeping willow, it makes up for it. Uh, it makes up for it with its size. In fact, this particular one happens to be one of the largest trees here in the Harlem Mirror area, and it stands out even when you're uh, looking uh, at it from uh, way across the water. Uh, one of the, uh, one other thing that really kind of sets this tree apart is the fact that it has this very large. A tree branch, almost like a secondary trunk. Uh, and that one actually grows nearly horizontally on the ground. At this point, um, it almost kind of looks like it's hugging the uh, rock outcrop uh, on which it's standing. All right, and continuing on with our walk, we can see some lovely flowers growing right by the water. This one is called Joe Pie Weed, uh, supposedly named after a native medicine man from Massachusetts who used the plant your typhus among early New England colonists. Uh, Joe pie weed is a perennial that grows best in most, uh, in most uh, moist fertile, uh, fertile soil along creeks, ponds, and wetlands. And you might have actually even planted one in your garden before. It has these beautiful pink flowers that bloom in late summer. And of course, they attract pollinators like butterflies and hummingbirds. All right, further down the pathway and we make our way along the south shore, our next stop is going to be uh, at the southernmost edges of the mirror. And just off the uh, southeastern arm of the water, you can see the gates and iron fences of Conservatory Garden. It's considered to be one of the uh, most beautiful in all of New York, but we'll save that one for another weekly walk. So right now we're just actually kind of uh, passing right by it. However, if you look closely, you can see that this iron fence separating the garden from the rest of the park, uh, it actually has these beautiful ornamental vines with heart-shaped uh, heart leaves adorning it. So these are gonna be what's called morning glories, which are really quite popular to plant in many gardens. There are of course thousands of varieties of these plants. Um, and depending on uh, your location, uh, morning glories can either be very lovely or they can actually be an invasive nuisance. Now they're called morning glories because they bloom daily in the morning and unfurl to relieve a colorful trumpet shaped flower. By the afternoon, they start to curl back like the uh, ones here in the image and basically the process starts over uh, again the next day. And uh, from here, we are gonna go ahead and continue north along the Eastern shore of the uh, Mir. Now, because this walkway is so close to Fifth Avenue, you're often going to see picnickers here, you're going to see dog walkers, uh, lots of families here taking advantage of the uh, promenade overlooking the water. And of course, sometimes the weeds and plants along the water can get a little overgrown, but our conservancy crews are always there to manage them, even during the hottest days of August. They definitely work hard to keep the park beautiful. So if you're ever out walking in the park and you see our crews in action, don't forget to stop and say thanks when you can. Alrighty, and now we come to our final stop. Now I wanna go ahead and end things off right here as we look west towards the Dana Center, just a few feet away from where we started. Uh, on our walk today, as we went around Harlem Mirror, we saw some really lovely views of the water from angles. I think the Harlem Mirror is quite interesting because even though it's so close to uh, such a busy urban neighborhood, the neighborhood of Harlem, uh, East Harlem and the Upper East Side as well, there are so many uh, hidden secrets here. And of course, many of them are going to be natural. All right, and with that, I thank you all so much for joining me on our weekly walk of Central Park. Don't forget to check out our in-person programs as well if you've not yet done so. Uh, we're now offering guided walking tours of areas like Belvedere Castle, Seneca Village, uh, 72nd Street, uh, and these statues and monuments uh, of uh, Central Park. We also have the North Woods virtual tour tomorrow at 3 p.m. as well. So don't forget to check that out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave the links down in the chat. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep the room open for any last final questions. 
but until then, from all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy, stay safe and be well. Have a good day, folks.